Katie Bins, and this is one of my partners, Tracy Haynes. Good morning. And we're master teachers here at the school, and we do a lot of coaching and professional development. And we really want to thank you so much for coming. We know this is a super, super busy time of the year, and just taking an hour out of your day, it means a lot. And we're really, really hoping that we can give you some great information to take back with you today and um, support your children in math. So we want to talk about how children encounter math concepts, especially during play. Because do your children love to play? Absolutely. It's very natural to play. In fact, we were put some things on the table and I saw some people fiddling with them. We're naturally drawn to play. And we're going to also give you lots of strategies on how you can support your children at home. Anybody in your family can do that. So the first thing I want you to do is we've given you a folder full of information that you're going to be able to use and hopefully look at later. But if you could just pull out your agenda for a second. And we're going to take a look at that. Our objectives today is what we want to cover is that we're going to discover there's more to math than counting and arithmetic. And that's a little different way to look at it. We're going to explore some math concepts that occur during play. We're going to have some hands-on activities. And we're going to share these ideas for supporting math and learning at home. Okay? So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to do a little activity. And what I want you to think about is when you start thinking about math in your life, right? What kinds of experiences have you had in the past? Do we think about that algebra course that almost put us under in high school, right? Or, um, you know, people talking about data analysis. Are they positive experiences or not experiences? Good experiences. Because we tend to forget that math isn't just about the things we haven't mastered, but all things we have mastered and what we do with them every day. So what we want to do is thinking about math every day. How do we use math every day? And what I'm going to ask you to do is think about just even this morning, from the time you got up till the time you got there, here, what types of math concepts did you use? There's a little paper in your um, folder that you can pull out. It says um, math at home. It has a list of concepts. Because remember, we're not just going to think about arithmetic and counting. We're going to think about other things. And it's going to list some ideas on it. I think it says, uh, yep, measurement. It has shapes on it. That's it, everyday math at home. I use math when I'm working in 
kitchen. One in the kitchen that work in me is this kitchen here at this school. Mm -hmm. So I use my head when I'm measuring out the food for breakfast. I guess that we have frozen strawberries. I have to make sure each kid has the same amount of strawberries in their cups. Mm -hmm. So we use fresh strawberries. So I have to make sure if I use three strawberries starting off the cups, I have to make sure every cup has three strawberries. So I had to count out 150 cups, so each cup had to have three strawberries, and that was hard because it was frozen, and strawberries were different sizes, oh. so I couldn't put one big strawberry and two small strawberries in one cup, so they all had to be the same size, so you know how to put those Lots different skills. frozen strawberries. <laughs> Lots of different skills. So I'm here in calculations. On my personal life, I use is, I have a three-year-old that's on the spectrum for autism. She goes here, she's in the yellow hallway. She has two good teachers, by the way, Miss Degree and Miss Fox. And then there for our eight Miss Ten seconds. She helped very well with her also as well. We use different charges at home, which works well. We do like how many different ways she can get dressed in the morning. Sometimes she likes to wear a pull up. We on our way to school because some days she drinks a lot in the morning or she drinks a lot at night and she don't always use the bathroom when she first gets up. So some days she wants to put a pull up on before she put her undies on in the morning. So we count which way she wanna get dressed first. If she wanna put her pull up on first, first. if she wanna put her right. undershirt on first, Second. if she just wanna wear undies, mm -hmm. and we count how many steps it takes to get dressed and get out the door. Right. Along with that, we count how many, how long it takes us to get out the door. Like this morning, she was moving extra slow because she wanted to stay awake and she thought it was gonna keep her from going to school. So, it took us an extra 30 minutes to get out the door and get to school. <laughs> we usually hear about 9.15, you know who's coming up off today? At 9.15. So we was an extra 30 minutes late. And she had a little watch with digital and she's wearing time. Right. So she said, oh, we're 30 minutes late. I said, guess who, who fault was that? And you know what answer she gave? She gave a good one. Mine. <laughs> and I gave her a high five and start on her shirt. Right. So listen to all the things. So she has to calculate. Uh, when you were talking about the food, you had to then figure out how many. You were looking even at sizes. We forget things like yeah, big and little. First, second. These are all math skills and math concepts that we don't really think about. How about somebody from this table? Thank you. Uh, before bed, we always use that. I always uh, give them time limits. Okay, right. Lots of time limits, right? And, uh, I tell them what time it, mm -hmm. it is and what time he's going to bed mm -hmm. and how much time in between. Right. Is time a hard concept for small children? Mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And we do a lot there with time, too. And a lot of times we'll even use sand timers so they can actually see it. Because five minutes sometimes seems like a really, really, really long time. So were you kind of surprised? I heard, like, how about I was this morning, uh, I didn't have much gas in the car. And I'm like thinking, OK, do I'm looking at my spin of thing again. Do I have enough to wait? And I'm like, I'm just going to go for it. You know. <laughs> so we're using these things all the time. And sometimes it surprises because we always think, you were saying, oh, Math, I, I, what did you say? What was your feeling about me? I hate math, right? Because we think of all these things that maybe these skills that we don't realize how much we use math every single day and why it's so important to engage our young children and support them because they're going to need to do this, right? Every single day. They're going to have to go to the grocery store one day. I know that's hard to believe now. <laughs> but trust me, they grow up in habits. They're going to have to figure on, um, you know, amounts, they're going to have to learn to count, mm -hmm. they're going to have to learn to measure, as you were saying, that's part of your job, you meet with those skills, to later in the long run, right? Absolutely. But we always think, I know, I'm not a math person at all, and I'm always like, I'm terrible. But obviously, you did tons of things and mastered lots of skills, so I want you to see it as a positive. And sometimes you don't even realize it. You don't even realize it. We use it every single day. Absolutely. Okay, so now we're going to do an activity, all right, because we don't want to just sit here. We're talking a lot about playing with math, right? So what I'm going to get you to do is everybody please take a container of Play-Doh. Okay, so what we're going to do is take it and take your Play-Doh out. Sorry about that. and then we're going to 
to talk about it. No, I saw everyone really, really engaged with their Play-Doh, okay? So let's just talk about it a few minutes. What kinds of things did you experience? What kinds of concepts did you encounter as you were playing with your Play-Doh, using your Play-Doh? Measuring. Measuring. How did you use measuring? Oh, she was making a person. So, and you made it, and the arms were the same length. You had to actually like, your <laughs> But you were trying to, like you were looking. So there's some measurement going on there. Okay, somebody else. Thickness. I'm telling you. Thickness, like if you wanted to make them all the same thickness, like the same type of thing, measuring. Yeah, yeah we forget Maybe about things like that. Leveling. Things actually be for you. Mm -hmm. Leveling. Big, small, right? Mm -hmm. Making thicknesses, different things like that. Okay. What else do we say? What else are people doing? Oh, I see some things over here. Uh, oh, I had a fence for the animals. You made a fence for your animals. Okay, so what kinds of concepts could you get as far as that goes? Counting these. You could count, right? How many animals? How many, how many animals I need? Mm-hmm. How about estimating how many sticks would fit into there, right? You had to figure out how many sticks. Oh, no, I just used all of them. You just used all of the sticks, okay. <laughs> Did you use all of them? Some of them? A few of them? Even that, right? What was happening over here? I saw someone doing some hands-on. Yeah, I made a snake, and I was trying to get her to make one that was smaller than mine, but she didn't want anything to do it. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and then she used the triangle cookie cutter. Mm -hmm. And then I had to count how many she put up. Oh, right. Shapes, right? Triangle shapes. So we got uh, shapes, we got measurement. Hmm. How about anybody do anything with patterning? Oh, what did you do? Uh, So there's a, a ball and a long piece, a ball and a long piece, so those things. So just by playing, the point is, is young children need to be engaged with material. They need to learn these math concepts through exploration and play. It works much better than using worksheets and drills and things like that. Just if I could made sit here, if I had given you a worksheet with a lot of number, like calculations on it, well, you would have done it because I would have been asking you to do it. But this was much more engaging, right? It was much more engaging. That's it. Children are naturally interested in these types of materials. So that's what we want to reinforce, for you to do these types of materials and support learning through fun and an engaging way. Okay? And Tracy's going to talk about some concepts. When we're talking with it. You? Okay. So, um... Most of you realize that our uh, curriculum is based, our whole program is based on the high school curriculum. Um, within that high school <laughs> curriculum, we have KDIs, which are key developmental indicators. And they're basically a series of skills that we focus on, on for the child. It's based on the whole child. So social, emotional, language, literacy, math, science, um, and social studies. It encompasses the whole child, physical development. Um, we're going to focus on the math KDIs. And within the math KDIs, um, children learn to uh, count things. And we're going to take a few minutes to talk about that. Um, well, when children learn to count things, um, the first thing that we talk about is that they um, have to put the numbers in the correct order. So that's one of the skills they have to learn. Um, and they also have to um, learn that when they're counting objects, we, like, we were talking about how we learn, they learn through using materials, so they have concrete materials. So when they're using those concrete materials and they're counting, they're counting with one-to-one -one correspondence. That means that each material is counted only one time. Um, and lastly, they want to use. We want to talk about, or we want them to learn that um, the last number when they're counting is the number that states how many. Um, a lot of times, you might see um, children um, maybe say numbers that are in the incorrect number, they're just randomly saying numbers as they're counting. Sometimes they might say the numbers in the correct order, but they might touch or count the material maybe more than one time. They, the thought gets ahead of the physical touch of the material. And then another time you might see where children maybe are able to count a series of items, one through five, correctly. But when you say, well, how many do you have? 
they go back to count again, not realizing that they have to say that they have five. Have ever, you ever seen your child anywhere within those stages? Okay, so it's okay to be in those stages. The whole purpose of learning to teach with, uh, to do math materials at an early level is to say that you know we're going to support them where they are. So within our classrooms, um, we have a, a variety of materials that support our children. Um, we also have um, we look for a chance to model. So we we're saying that. You know, you're within your opportunity of playing with the Play-Doh or even using the shapes on the table, you are able to, um, you're, you're playing and you don't even realize you're doing math. We take that opportunity with our students to join them in play and support them in math. While they're playing with blocks, we're talking about spatial awareness, about how large a tower might be or how much space they need to make, you know, to follow through with their plan. You might count how many blocks. There might be some comparisons. Um, talking about shapes and measurement, all within their play. Obviously, you have an example of Play-Doh right in front of you, um, different ways that math is supported. So we're always taking that opportunity to support our children in, in their play. They don't even realize they're doing it. Also, we, um, we, we support math but with problem solving. Sometimes, you know, you might find that there's not enough chairs at a table. What can we do to solve the problem? We have three people, but now we, we have three chairs, but now we need, you know, two more people want to join us. We need five chairs. What are we going to do? So that supports, that helps um, support math in, in daily life also. Um, so also, with that, that covers counting a little bit. Um, also with um, shapes, we identify the name, the shape, and we describe shapes. We use a lot of that descriptive language um, and, and support vocabulary where not only are we just labeling the shape, but we're talking about how many angles, how many um, straight sides are within our shapes. And then another important skill is that sometimes shapes put together can make a brand new shape that really helps with spatial awareness. Um, measuring, describing, comparing, ordering of things. You were talking about the thickness of the Play-Doh. Is it thick? Is it thin? Will it fit within a container? Um, you know, how, um, how we, we compare short and long. And also, um, how we uh, can identify and describe, copy, create patterning. Um, we start out with patterns of, children like to sometimes with patterning, they're just lighting things up. And from that point, we try to support with maybe two things where we do an A-B pattern where it's a circle square, a circle square, it's called an A-B pattern. Sometimes it gets a little bit more difficult where you introduce three things, circle square, square triangle, um, or um, red, blue, red, blue, blue, red, blue, blue. And we have to remember that when we're making patterns, it has to be repeated more than um, two times. After two times, it becomes a pattern. So it's a tricky concept, but we, what we do is we support the children where they are, and then we kind of um, incorporate it, um, the skills naturally in their play. So right now we're going to get a chance to um, go play ourselves. We have a series of activities set up in the other room.
some of those things. So <laughs> not going to look exactly like that, but come up with your own versions. They will come up with their own versions. Absolutely. So you like shape collaging? Such a simple free, right? Just cut up. You can, if you don't have construction paper, use newspaper. Use anything around just to cut up shapes. Good. I really like the um, snack idea because you know, for our, you know, we got to bring a snack to class anyway, and to have them make it real quick. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cooking is a wonderful activity. There's so much so, language. You can go right about that. My little she loves cooking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They look, even like, oh, how many times do we have to stir it? Five times, let's count. One, two. There's so many things they don't even so realize. Like, ask me, or I take her to Dollar Tree, and I give her a limit on Sundays. I tell her she got $10. And I make her pen out 10 ones out my wallet. Well, it's more than that, I don't come to Texas, so I tell her she got $10 to spend. Mm -hmm. So we go in the dollar store, and she'll get baking goods. And if she want to get decorations, I tell how much more money she got. Mm -hmm. That how much more money she needs for her toppings, like to put on her cupcakes and stuff, because she like, you know, they need snacks here, as you say. And she like, she don't like chips and she don't like candy. Mm -hmm. She like like. Right. She, she like um shortbread stuff and pancakes. And but what a like baby experience. Baby. So, I tell her, you know what she needs, but I give her a ten dollar limit when we go to the dollar store. Right. And she like, oh, well, I want to use sprinkles this week. Well, how much more money do you need for sprinkles? Mm -hmm. So that oh, even shopping for the material is an experience. And then I'm like, well, you got to ask the, the store person what hour is it. They're like, well, it's an hour three. Well, where is number three? I don't know where three is. And I make her look for the number three in the store. Wow. And we'll so go in the store and she's like, somebody one. Somebody oh, <laughs> when you think about it, we do these things all the time. And don't right. Like, right. I used to do it. And then I'm like, you know what? I'm tired of doing it. She want this stuff. I'll uh, make her do it. <laughs> And cooking too, not only is it also a lot of oh, yeah, math, now she it's all, that right, measuring, but also what else, if you're reading a recipe, what are you doing? It's That's language, it's language yeah, and yeah. literacy. Oh, this says cup. I can follow see it. Direction. Yeah, follow follow direction. direction. So, so many left, skills right. that you can do with your child, right? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. she likes the baking for you. She loves the cooking part. How about the patterning activity? Is that something that you would, you think that you'd be able to do at home? Yeah. But I wish ours would change from the colors pink. Because everything she bought when she goes shopping is always pink. So then pink, you would, you would pink, focus pink, on pink, pink and maybe something pink. else. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, what are we doing this week? Pink, mommy, anything with pink in it. So then when I order school and surface clothes, everything I buy has something with the color pink in it. It's blue and pink, black and pink. Mm -hmm. Oh, she's wearing blue pants with a green and pink shirt. Oh, my Jesus. <laughs> she pair everything with the color pink when we go shopping. Something with the color pink. But she makes sure it matches. Everything has pink in it. Right. How about um, the books we saw? Shit. Did you I'm sorry. to say about the patterning? I thought okay, I didn't ahead. get a chance to look through the thing yet, but the first one of just the cars and the big and the small and big and small and super mm -hmm. cute. Yeah. And we have a million cars. So. I get the big forks materials. Forks and spoons. And yeah. Pencils and great. It doesn't have to be expensive. It doesn't have to be bottle well, caps. Well, it's right. Right. Bottle caps. Yeah. 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 Even if you're just standing out waiting for your the yeah. bus at the bus stop. A, a stick and an acorn, a stick mm -hmm. and an acorn, mm -hmm. you know, exactly. Mm -hmm. exactly. And don't forget about singing. Children love music and things. I promise somebody I would try this. There you go. Goes like this. Debbie is the leader, the leader, the leader. Debbie is the leader, a pattern she will make. Ooh. Head, shoulders, head, shoulders, head, shoulders. Mommy is the leader, the leader, the leader. Mommy is the leader of a pattern she will make. See how simple it can be? You're saying, what reminded me, you said standing at the bus stop, right? Children love music and they love to watch you. And when we're doing motions like that, we always try to do first the actual motion, then add the words in. It's easier for children to grasp. But so something as simple as that, free, right? Engagement that with you and your child and your families, okay? So it's important to remember that it's a skill, but it's not a skill that's going to be learned at one time. So it's something that's going to happen over and over again for mastery. So anytime, just like we do in the classroom, anytime you have that opportunity 
to plug in that skill, whether it is measurement or shape recognition or patterning or counting, to take that opportunity to support your child and then you know extend the process. Any questions? We want to thank you for coming. In your folder, you have a feedback.